Yeah. It, no, I it like the, was, I like the yeah. new eugenics because it's not coercive. It yeah, just it, it's market based. Yeah, it happens pressure. that <laughs> you're a parent, and I think one assumption we can make is that you want the best for your kid. If you've got this treatment that could make your kid twice as smart, twice as athletic, twice as resistant to any disease, you're going to take it. Twice as sexy. Yeah, damn straight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tristan's parents would have definitely gone for that. Yeah. Too bad they didn't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. So are they evil parents, but not? That's why the only thing that loves me is the internet. All right. Actually, no, no, no. Just one other point he um, he he made was that um, say your parents didn't give you the sexy genes, you can't hate them for it because that's you. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's quite. Otherwise, you wouldn't exist. Yeah. That that was a good point. Yeah. You you, you can't can't hate them because you exist. You can't define harm in this. So, like, you know, the the whole idea of medicine's always been do no harm, but. Where is the heart? Can't define yeah. it. He was trying to yeah, point there. Yeah. 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 An absolutely fantastic introduction to the Singularity Conference. This was the first guy speaking. I mean, we, we could talk about this for hours longer, but yeah. we'll just briefly go over it. So, next talk. Good. I next suppose talk. next talk next is by Hugo de Garris. Was he next up, really? But No, no but next we, next we've, we've, we've oh, earmarked yeah. six talks. That's the thing. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, he's next up in line chronologically, and my goodness, it was epic. Hugo is one? the bomb. He is the, he's awesome. He is. Controversial views. And yeah. Go, Jeff. Give the outline. Yeah, you want, no, you, no, you're right. You're up. You're all up. right. Well, because I have the laptop. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not me talking. It's the computer talking. Okay. Um, and this is quite relevant because, uh, okay, so Hugo de Garris was arguing from, uh, I suppose, a pretty easy platform. He, he, like, he, he's been alive for a while, so he remembers what it was like during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And he, he thinks that when, you know, AI comes about, it's going to be very much like, you know, the, the question, like, who, who should own capital? He thinks that it's going to be a lot of violence, a lot, a, a lot of, uh, you know, actually, yeah, just a lot of violence, a lot, a lot of Luddite sentiments, a lot of, a lot the of the exact same to... way as how the twentieth yeah. century century was defined by: do the individual own capital yeah. or does the collective own capital? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. capitalism versus communism. And you had like the evil empire versus America back then. Yeah, like, and you know, and he's saying the twenty first century. And is... in the twenty first century, you're going to have a, another sort of, I suppose, party split between people who he turned. The cosmists, who are all about, you know, uh, yes, we should build these machines that are essentially smarter than hum- human beings by a huge order of magnitude, like by 10 to the 24 times. Just ridiculous. Yeah, so like, yeah, <laughs> like beyond, beyond what we could possibly perceive. And, um, you know, and by the Terrans, this is another one of his pieces of jargon, as, you know, the people who, who believe in the continuation of that species. And it's a pretty huge argument, but if you think about it, one side's all about, you know, the universe, the untold potential of the universe, and us getting out into it. And the other side is about the continuation of our species, which has been, if you think about it, the drive that's kept us going yeah, for all of history. Of years. Yeah. Like, we've never been confronted with a question like this. Like, we, it, the question he's essentially posing is, should we replace ourselves? Because if you think about it, even if you become a cyborg, you, you basically are replacing yourself because you will not think the way you yeah. think right now. You will not be essentially the same person you are. Just like, you know, me with this handy dandy Android phone, which is totally better than his dysfunctional iPhone, by the way. Um, me with this Android phone, it's quite a different person to a per- me without this Android phone. Like, I, my behavior has changed. And if you, uh, like, if you just identify a person by how they behave relative to their world, then, yeah, I've changed. And it would be yeah. a thousand percent but, uh, different with, yeah. like, cyborgs. But, yeah, and, yeah. Please so. for upgrade. So that was the gist of it, and yeah, he was he was pushing he was pushing a very very uh, accelerated time view of this. Like we actually had he a lot, did. like you know, futurists are all about you know projections, and some of them were saying you know hundreds of years, and he was saying you know within five years, singularity will be a term that everybody's in the lexicon. Yeah. yeah, everybody's talking about it, and you know within ten years you might have robots in the house like twenty twenty. And within, you know, 20 years, you might have AI and, some, you know, See, the scary kind funny. of AI. I actually agree with that. I think maybe the singularity is going to enter the lexicon of, like, most people into the, enter the zeitgeist of the common person. Maybe within five years. Um, 10 years. I mean, we've already got rumors. We've already got most of the robots in our house. I mean, they're going to be upgraded. There's no, there's no denying that. I think people are going to, people already start to identify them as robots. They're going to start becoming more and more... Like, just right there. They're going to be cheap. They're going to be right... Everyone is going to have a robot in their house. Like, in 10 years. And, I mean, 20 years. We're talking 2030 here. Mm. I mean, singularity-wise, like, you look at Moore's Law. I I think AIs are going to happen. I mean, I'm already seeing AI around me everywhere. I mean, Google just astounds me in every way, shape, and form. 20 years is my life. Plus three. But... (laughs) Yeah, you're not quite 20 anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just... 
It, it does. It does amaze me. I, I, I roughly agree with him. Mm. There was... Sorry. Also, was he actually saying, like, quantum computing in 10 years? Yeah, yeah topological quantum like That I can't... I, I don't yeah. know anything about. I um, know nothing about. I, I can't extrapolate intellectually, uh, intelligently about that. He was saying it was more robust, essentially. Uh, yeah. So, Google, if you can do anything, quantum topological quantum computing, maybe do it on that wiki symbol. Like, yeah, so, yeah, 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 that's a good one. And, and maybe it won't blow your brain, unless, of course, you do want the full rigorous mathematics. It, Apparently, it's 2002 Fields Medal. Ed Witten's the guy to look up. Yeah, he's the new Einstein. Ed Witten. Ed Witten. Check him <laughs> out. He, he created M-theory and string theory. He's very witty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Leave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leave now. Uh, <laughs> did, we, did, you, did we talk about... Um, Giga Death? We haven't talked about Giga Death. Yeah, he goes his whole thing, like the reason why... Well, he, go, go the war. Summarise that. The, okay, the war. He, he's predicting that... Um, essentially, because you'll have these two people... Like the Terrans and the Cosmos, the Cosmos who people who want to actually stupid names, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> like we you got to come up with the no, marketing. Like he has to talk to uh, Peter Elliot about marketing. Apparently, yeah, and I think he did do that. <laughs> he exchanged cards. Good. Um, but yeah, the Cosmos are essentially the people who want to you know go explore the universe. They want to um, merge with AI to you know become artifacts, artificial intellects. Again, Another that term, yeah. I like that term actually. No, That's I growing on it. me. It's it growing it reminds me of Daleks. It, it, essentially, it's artificial intelligence. Yeah. Is, Why not call it that? It's too long and boring. I'll call it AI. <laughs> AI's um, got a lot of baggage. Though, so yeah, point. there's those people and there's the Terrans who, you know, they want to remain human. They want to live the current way of life. It, it's, it's almost similar to, like, who we are now as a, as a kind of technological civilization and the Amish. Like, a bit like that, but of organs of a magnitude difference. Um, and he's basically saying that... What was... What was the year he was predicting? Was there any year? Do you remember any Put year? Gigadeth? Oh, uh, in, tw- in, mid- in midway through the century. He was, yeah, midway the, through the century. Yeah, he was, he was yeah, predicting was a witch few. hunt, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. he was saying that, yeah, there'll be a witch hunter because, because there's the risk that actually if we make these artilex, these artificial intell- intelligences, that they could destroy the entire population if they go rogue or if they see that it's, it's more yeah. rational to just get yeah. rid of us. And was, so... <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll empathise with yeah. us about it's as much not, as we empathise with a, it's a fly. It's yeah. logical. Yeah, well, that, anyway, that, that's what it's he was It's a possibility. It's, yeah. it, it is a possibility. It, just it doesn't... Seems, yeah, there are other... It's like, not logical. Lots of Why other alternatives. Would, there are other... If, if you want to... Sorry. A little bit of a rant here. Like, if you want to actually destroy people, if you want to actually gain their computational knowledge, do it, do it from the inanimate objects. Do it from all of that. You, you've got... Uh, yeah. Un- understandable, like, amounts of energy and uh, mass and all of that you can actually order into computational parts like i mean why attack the humans they're they're a bug they're a, they're a nothing they're a bacteria on your arm as hugo de garris did like flick it off they don't count anymore you're a new life form why would you attack us no point take our moon take jupiter take your robot. yeah we well, are trying to say that essentially we're, we're going down a certain computational path that could actually come up with new yeah. Where we're not just but it was the whole idea of the precautionary principle, which is brought up a lot. Yeah. You know? If there is, <laughs> yeah. Mm. But then again, like there, there was a good rebuttal, I thought, for who. You, but there was a panel right immediately after uh, the Garris's uh, speech, which, by the way, was in rapture and it was long and it was awesome. It's good. But uh, yeah, it was basically Robert Sparrow saying, you know, uh, you know, possibility does not equal the probability of inevitability. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Sorry, possibility does not equal <laughs> inevitability. That was br- uh, a little Bruceism there. Um, on Nathan, yeah. Isn't, yeah. Uh, yeah, but anyway, just because it's possible doesn't mean it's inevitable. And you know, Hugo de Garris was plucking numbers. He was basically exploring, I suppose, the very limits of what is possible. He, he wasn't in a physics numbers. framework. He he was just uh, his uh, assumptions were not based on theory. Like uh, a lot of his like war and all of that, you can't say there's going to be a war because of this. There's going to be he, he definitely actually say, conflict though. Uh, see, that I even disagree with. I I don't think you can make that assumption. I don't think uh, you can. I think I can. No, no, I'm, I not, mean, sure about, you, I'm not sure about gigadeth I'm just saying, war, look at, but look there at the be... trends. All you can say, if you want to predict the future, is based on the trends. And we can't, based on the trends, say there's going to be a war. By say the way, by gigadeth, we mean like a billion people dying. Yeah, that, that's what yeah, you is about. Yeah, gigadeth. I, I just don't feel that you can make that assumption. I don't think we have enough information on the trends to say there's going to be that. 
with even a per- well, we've mentioned a good before that, that with technology like technological progress going so incredibly fast that governments will eventually want to step in and say no nah, sorry we have to slow this down because it's affecting our I guess ability but to is it more speculation <laughs> rather than it's not based on anything. Well, it's a, again, yeah. it's a possibility, but that's all this, it, all the futurism stuff is no, a no, possibility. No, 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 the good futurism is based on trends. But this is based on a trend. Like, we we well, know people now who've said they will rise up in arms and take us down if yeah, we actually... Yeah, it's the same way that we can point to, like... <laughs> good friend of ours, John, he said, like, yeah, if you guys create artificial intelligence or motion that, that's machines not, that's not or a trend. create machines, I will hunt you down it's, with it's, my guns It's and not take a trend. Up. Like, I mean, we can point like, to seriously. Moore's Law, we can point to uh, a lot of things and say that there are trends leading towards that. If this trend continues, therefore this will happen. Societal stuff, it's but more difficult. on the topic of trends, there was another good rebuttal. Moore's Law is a historical generalization rather than natural law. Yeah, I disagree. Yeah, but still. <laughs> um, so mind the grand speculative claims because hype destroys movements. Yeah. Actually, I thought that was kind of relevant because, you know, Hugo de Garris was all about the grand speculative claims and there was a need for that. I thought, I thought his speech was very appropriate for a singularity summit but still you, you've got to in terms of like the wider media when you're trying to distill these concepts out you've got to sort of watch what you're saying and maybe not mention things like giga death and yeah, based yeah. upon based upon like historical trends of world war well, see, II, that's what i'd like if it was more like just logical saying the trend leads towards this moore's yeah. law is great because you can say look look at moore's law look at this trend that's happened and you progress further on when you start pulling out numbers like giga death and a big war between cosmists and terrans i mean you're not basing it on anything. I mean, that is where it becomes speculative, and that's where you give futurists and all of that a really bad name. It's not based too much on anything. If you can show me a graph saying that this leads to this, leads to this, leads to this, leads to this, then then I'm okay. But I feel he didn't did, didn't do that. I'm sure he, he probably could come up with some yeah. guys. Would have loved to have gone drinking, like out drinking with him. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. He kind of disappeared afterwards. Yeah. So yeah. if you go, if you're watching, next time. Definitely yeah, do. Come to Wollongong. Yeah. Oh, this Facebook ad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, add us as friends. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, talking about social media, then, I suppose that brings yeah, let's go to the next one. The, well, the next speaker? What? I was just going to say, we should mention that Robert Sparrow's talk isn't going to be up online because he was yeah. yes. concerned yeah. about the whole eugenics, eugenics tag. tag. You search for so. Robert Sparrow and you pick up eugenics. Yeah, not positive for your career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what we, yeah, you won't be able to see that talk later on. We won't be able to, we might try and do an interview with him. It. We might be able to do an no, interview, to, maybe. To, but we won't yeah. be able to do the video. An interview would be wonderful, actually. Okay, cool. yeah, well, sorry, sorry. At least we could post our notes up on line yeah, yeah, straight. So i cut you off. Oh. Yeah. All yeah. right, but anyway, I suppose close to these guys' hearts is the singularity in social media. That was another really, really interesting presentation by Cameron Riley from the G'day, uh, the G'day World Singularity uh, pod- no, podcast, podcast Network. network. Yeah. Podcast yeah. Network, yeah. Podcast Network, and I think that was one of his podcasts, but... Anyway, anyway but yeah, I think it was. Anyway, impressions. <laughs> Thanks for the mention. <laughs> that was awesome. Totally oh, yeah. unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, man. <laughs> awesome. I wonder, like, how how did he come across us? Did Adam mention us or something? Uh, he he mentioned us in our speech. Yeah, uh, in his speech. Sorry. Oh, there was a, there was a screenshot of our of our site up there with oh, our faces. Yeah, it was kind of cool. And Tristan was like all embarrassed because he was wearing a yellow shirt. Hey, I'm straight. I love my shirt now, though. <laughs> that was um, cool. Yeah. I, I, I did like, I did like his speech. It was more of a, more of a call to arms than anything about saying that this is a, this is a trend that's going to continue and we should actually start uh, talking to more people about it. A little yeah. content, not too much content he was in worried. his speech. He was worried, and I think he was justifying a lot of his worries. Basically, yeah. he, 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 he was using a lot of Marxist sort of um, uh, yeah. ideas, but... You know, in the internet, the internet in the nineties was basically ridiculed, but it was going to bring democratization to the media. But then it's apparently like it was subverted thing. by by you know the the institution, I suppose. So he's so worried about you know something like another movement like the Singularity or mm. whatever is affiliated with that. If you don't actually have people getting out there and talking about it and trying to make a grassroots movement about it ASAP, it will be subverted as well, which would be bad because you know that's yeah. the whole idea of having yeah. you know medieval mindsets with modern technology. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is a good point. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool actually bringing up all of that, that, that more the movement to actually educate people about this idea and saying like exponential growth is an important thing to look at. I think it was more than the singularity, I think it was more exponential growth that he was speaking a lot about. Yeah.